So if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that my forks on my bike just recently got warranty repaired and serviced. So the bushings inside the lowers were a little bit, maybe not installed correctly, a little bit skew with, and they're wearing out the bottom of my stanchion. So the and the black and when every time I dropped the lowers, you could see that the black anodizing was was slowly starting to deteriorate more just in a in a certain spot so i contacted solar they had a look they said yep send it in we'll have a sus uh they serviced it changed the bushings pretty much a full overhaul new crown steer and upper new stanchions uh they feel much better buttery smooth uh, they were due for a service anyway i won't say they feel much better they uh, they just feel buttery smooth a fresh service but the air spring doesn't feel quite right so as you know I'm super picky with my air spring setup my bike setup in general if your bike isn't exactly how you want it you won't be able to ride it exactly how you want to so I'm gonna pull them apart and we're just gonna do a little bit of a con condensed version of how I'd service uh, lowers so how you know how I'd go about a basic fork service we're gonna pull that spring apart see if there's some excess grease it just feels like it's pretty much the same as all the fox forks that I've come across. There's always an excess build up of grease in the negative air chamber. So we're gonna open that up, have a sus, see what's going on there. So first things first, front and back tire is off, or front and back wheel is off. Frames clamped in the in the stand. Now because I've got an alloy frame, it's all good to clamp the top tube. As long as you don't over clamp it obviously. If you've got a carbon frame definitely do not clamp your top tube because long term it can definitely create some weakness and eventually failure so be careful there but anyway pressure out so allen key whatever you want use whatever you want to drop that pressure but when you release the pressure just release it slowly so as the fork sucks up you'll see it you probably can't see the bottom of the fork there but as it sucks up if you go too fast it'll kind of vacuum it'll vacuum in and you won't be able to extend it again. You'll get air stuck in that uh, negative side, pressure stuck in that negative side, pushing it up. And when you take the lowers off and try and remove the air spring, it'll be extremely hard to pull out. So make sure you let the pressure out evenly. So compress it a couple of times, let it out again. Make sure you got all the air out of that chamber. That's good. Let it off. Now I'm going to crack the top. I'm going to take it off completely. But I'm going to crack it. So I've got a... I should have a six-sided, which I've just bought. I just bought myself a six-sided socket. But I still have to take the chamfer off. So this one, if you can see, I've removed, I've removed that chamfer. So it's really not... Like, it's much less likely to damage the top cap because it's so shallow. The chamfered ones barely get any bite so I'm gonna get that chamfer taken off and this is actually an impact driver which is probably not the best but still really good does the job so generally I'll grab it underneath the crown put my finger on the top of the ratchet put this into my ribs which are broken at the moment so it might, this might hurt a little bit, but, and then just a little bit, I mean, you can pull it, but I've, I prefer the impact. So I'm not gonna get, not loose, I've yeah, I already set it up. Just crack it, and then you're good to go. If you got that pressure and everything's square, that impact will undo it really nicely. I do kind of subscribe to the idea of impact is better than, than force when you're undoing bolts like that, but everyone's got their own opinions. So that's cracked now. So I'm going to leave that for now, so that's going to be easy to get off later on. I'm not going to be struggling or, or trying to wrench on it. Next next step. So I've removed the brake from the lower, so you've got to disconnect the brake. And also obviously this little this little bolt here. It goes onto that little support. Keep it somewhere safe, so keep it with the rest of your tools. I've just got it here. And now I'm going to flip it upside down undo the rebound adjusters and drop the lowers. So 10 mil socket for the non-drive side. 
be gentle, be careful with this stuff. So I've got the bike turned upright on the stand, so that way when I do let these, uh, pop these out and slide the lowers past the point of sealing, the fluid, the lubrication fluid isn't gonna drip out on me. So just past level is fine. So the fluid's obviously going back that way. That's that one. 15 mil for this one. Again, be careful. That was very loose. That's uh, quite surprising actually. That was extremely loose. That was not even nipped up really. So, solar. Keep an eye on that in future. And what you want to do here, mallet, rubber mallet, or plastic mallet. this off a little bit more. Now you still want a few, a good solid few threads hanging in. Fox make a tool that you attach to these threads and hammer that so you never damage these nuts. But if you're gentle, I don't think it's too big of an issue. We never used to have special tools to undo these things. So a good way to do it is to wind your, that lower nut all the way off. So it's all the way off and then have a look at it and just wind it on kind of as much as you can but to still have probably three or four mil between the bottom of that bolt and the base of your lowers so you've got room to knock it in and, and break that suction but there's a lot of threads on that bolt so you're never going to damage those threads so I have to go to town there you go that's popped And the 10 mil on the non-drive side, same story. Have a few mil between your lower and your, and the bottom of the bolt. Easy. You don't have to go crazy, you don't have to smash them. As long as you've let the air out correctly and there's no pressure pushing out, should be fine. So they're both released, that's nice, I'm happy with that. Make sure we're above level. Double check that everything's loose. Yep, that's good. Gotta take these bolts off. Put them somewhere safe. Make sure your crush washers are good. If they're not, replace them, obviously. They say replace them every time you service them, but it's just a waste of plastic. just turning inside that's not good that is not cool what's going on here yeah that's not good at all that's just turning on the inside this is not cool so we've got an issue here that I haven't really come across before the bolt the 10 mil bolt is it's not undoing so it's just the thread is spinning with the bolt. So I can't undo it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna air it up again. I'm gonna put a little bit of air pressure in there, which is no big deal, don't stress. And I'm gonna see if that can create a little bit of resistance and hold the thing in place so I can undo this. And then I'm gonna drop the pressure out again and drop that lower. Because that, that air spring can only ex extend so far. It's not gonna pop off or blow off. It's not. I'm not in danger of things going terribly wrong until I've got these lowers off. Once these lowers off, that air pressure absolutely has to be out. So let's see if that helps. That seems to have put enough pressure on it for me to undo it. So if I do it slowly, the thread still turns, but do it fast, again, that's that impact. So I'm, I'm catching it off guard, really getting it, uh, getting it done. So now it's you know, loose enough to wind off. So the reason it's tight in the first place is because of the crush washer. The crush washer is nice and fresh, nice and new and it's binding really well to that thread. So we're good, we've got that off now. 
crisis averted. So we'll let that bit of pressure out again, cycle it, make sure everything's good, and then we'll pop it off again and continue the process. Now it's just simply a case of pointing back down, put my catch can here, and just drop them lowers. I'm just going to let that sit there and drain. I'll wipe these off and then I'll pop it back up and pull that spring out. So this next bit you've got to be really really delicate because you're dealing with soft metal here on this shaft and you kind of got to use something metal to pry this clip out. It's kind of like a circlet. So what I'm going to do is flat head into there. It's just got a little bit of a rise there that you can stick your flat head under. So I'm going to fish for it there and now I'm just going to slowly work my way under it in order to pop it out. So that's it there. That's out. Be very, very delicate that you don't hit this with any sharp part of your metal, any sharp part of your... You basically don't want to touch it at all really. That, that tap there is just for just showing you what's up but that's not going to do any damage but don't gouge at it don't just be very gentle when you do it so that comes off now we can just pop that spring out now if I let the if I let that air pressure out incorrectly this will be sucked down and it'll be really hard to pop out but because I've done it correctly it comes out nice and easily so if we look at that there is some grease in that negative side it's not bad but it's enough for me to it's actually quite quite a good grease so I'm gonna leave all of this grease on there but I'm just gonna wipe off I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff under here that's that's not necessary so when I do that you'll see how much is in there compared to the comparative to how big this assembly is have a look, we're getting, it, it really does accumulate when you pull it all off because it's not going to do anything in there on that top hat. It's not going to do anything down here. It's not going to do anything anywhere but on the shaft. So we're going to take all of that excess off. So I've got a lot of grease on my hand now just from the negative side. I haven't touched that positive side at all. So to me, that's, that's stuff that suffers, uh, deteriorates your performance. So they put all this technology into making the air springs bigger, the negative air sides bigger, and it gets eliminated by having excessive, unnecessary, ineffective grease in there acting as a volume spacer to bring that bring that negative size smaller again. So now you can see I've got heaps of grease on my hand. I've still got a fair bit of grease to wipe off there. So I'll get a rag, I'll wipe that off, and then I'll just put grease where it's necessary. So for me, grease is super necessary on this ring itself, which it has, it's got a good amount of grease there. Super necessary to have a bit on top here, which is enters into the positive chamber. So it's constantly keeping the wall where it's sliding up and down greased. As the fork builds up heat, that dissipates and, and, and kind of melts a little bit, gets thinner, gets runnier, so it really lubricates well. This stuff in the bottom, it's, it's really pointless. This shaft here gets lubricated from your uh, bath fluid so you don't need any grease in that lower part of the shaft. This seal here stays put, so that just needs grease for install. It doesn't need any maintaining grease, it stays put once it's in there. So anything excessive is just gonna suffer, you're just gonna suffer performance from it. So let's tidy that up and stick it back in. So I've actually put a little bit of extra grease on this top, top of this piston head here just so it's got plenty to move around and it'll just it'll just last a little bit longer. That will eventually migrate through your equalization port down into the negative, but 
it'll take a little bit of little bit of time and by the time it starts to feel kind of wacky you would have got a good few months out of it anyway so no big deal a little bit extra is kind of good uh, keep that internals keep those internals moving well so reinstalling it if you don't have this top cap off which I've got it cracked so I can take it off at will if you don't have it off you're gonna feel a bit of resistance pushing this back in so obviously because you're building up air pressure because there's nothing for this air there's nowhere for this air to go so you either use your allen key and depress that Schrader valve at the top so you can push it through without issue or you take that top cap off if you're going to be putting if it's a full service you take that top cap off because you've got to put three mil of uh, Fox 28 gold in there anyway but just for the purposes of showing you I'll just just depress that valve and also you don't want to put it in like this if you put it in like this and force it all the way up and then pop this in with this when you go to pump it up you've already got this a big negative amount of pressure to overcome while you're pumping it up so you don't want that you want to put it in like this so it's all greased up there's a bit of grease on that inside as well everything's clean everything's good that's in and we reinstall this clip so make sure that there's no no grease taking up space in the clips little recess I'm just going to give that a little bit of a wipe and we're going to reinstall it same way that they gave it doesn't matter if it's up or down really I don't think but I'm just going to install it the same way that they had it in so feed one end in probably the end that doesn't have the riser so feed the end without the risen bit in push it all in make sure it clicks into place and once it's in grab the tool that you used to put it in in the first place and just lean it against the the tab and make sure that it spins freely in that groove to so make sure it's in that groove properly give it a little double check and grab on it pull on it that's tight that's in that's solid now I'm going to put everything back together so because this forks only essentially one right old the lowers are squeaky clean I've just left them upside down so all that fluid in each leg rolls down and lubricates the re-lubricates these foam rings so I don't have to take them out re-lubricate them, mess around with them, blah 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 so simply make sure everything's clean, these have had a good wipe over, I might give them another wipe good to go you know what I will do but there's no grease inside these there's a tiny bit on that side there but there's really no grease inside these seals so a little bit of grease there definitely helps also not too much you don't want to you know take up too much space but a little bit of grease in there most certainly helps so we'll do that now so when I install these when I put the foam rings back in generally if I've got them out I'll give them a little pre-stretch so that they will most certainly sit more so in the outside of its groove instead of uh, retracting back and potentially getting in the way of your stanchions when you slide the when you slide the lowers back on. So let's have a look. They're sticking out a tiny bit, but I don't think it'll be an issue. You'll know when they go up. You'll know if it's caught because it'll be a little bit. They kind of roll over, and they don't feel your fork won't feel very good. So kind of massage them on. You don't want to be rough here. You don't want to damage your seals, and you want to put them on relatively evenly. So just give them left and right, a little bit of back and forth. They're in. We're past those foam rings. Smooth as butter. There's no. That's really good. There's no. Um, there's no roll over there. That's excellent. Now what we do is 
roll it back up again. Ready for ready for the lubricating fluid. So I'll do the lubricating fluid in the lowers, do it up, and then I'll put the three mil in the upper. So I'll do the damper side bath fluid first. We got the PTFE infused five weight Fox gear, forty mil of that. So if you're not absolutely a thousand percent sure of how much to put in each side. Definitely check the Fox website. They've got all the information. They make it super simple. Just Google it. It'll pop straight up. Got a little measuring cup here just to be double sure. Give it a quick clean out. And we got the KOM cycling syringe as well. Shout out KOM. Thanks guys. You guys are killer. Give it a good shake. Make sure the consistency is good. And this cup holds 40 mil, so basically fill it to just below the top. Yeah, looks good. into the syringe. So you can see that's ever so slightly above 40 mil which isn't a big deal. I'll just give it a few drops out. And we're bang on. We've got 40 mil of fluid in there. Again, we've got the forks are just above level, so it's not going to drip back into me. Damper side, so the side where you rebound the stuff is, quite simply, just going to pump it in. You can obviously use a bit of a bigger volume syringe or syringe exit, but this is what I've got and it's handy, so it does the job, that's good. Now give that syringe a quick clean and put some Fox 28 in, 10 mils or 10 cc's in this air side. So fluids in, 10 mils in the air side, 40 mils of the five weight in the damper side. Now what I'm going to do is slide those lowers down, so the end of the air spring pops out and the end of the damper shaft pops out. We're going to do them up at full extension, we're not going to play so sometimes you can get a little bit more suppleness out of your fork if you compress these a little bit and then do everything up to kind of create a vacuum in this. It's kind of like another air spring. In this lower, it's like another air spring. And when you smash runs constantly, you get a little bit of pressure built up from heat in there. And quite often someone, people will just put a little zip tie down the side here. Another way of doing it is when you service your forks and you drop your lowers, you just compress it a little bit so you've got a little bit of room for that to expand. But I like to keep it consistent because you're kind of guessing. There's no, there's no sag meter or anything here. You'd be guessing it'd be different every time. So keep it consistent. Just do them up at full extension and make do with that. And then once that's on, once that's done up, and they're not going to leak out the bottom, we'll take this, take this cap off completely and just put three mil of the 20 weight gold in the top. Keep them nice and fresh and put everything back together, pump them up. So I had the same issue of that thread moving, doing the 10 mil back up. So simply just nipped up this bolt, uh, nipped up this top cap, added the pump, put about 30, uh, 30 PSI, 
30 to 40 will do it. It's just enough to create force so that spring is touching the bottom of your lower and creating a little bit of friction. And then that allows that thread to stop moving and you can you can wind that bolt on probably. Nip them up nice and tight. Obviously don't over tighten them. Check out the Fox website for torque specs and uh, just try and do everything accurately. Be careful. So that's it, we're all done. That's how I service my forks. Just pay attention to the details when you're doing things up and, and pulling things apart. You wanna be gentle, because if you break something, then you, you gotta wait until you get that new part back in or whatever it is. So final steps, remount the brake. I put the rebound adjustments back on. Everything's nipped up properly. Wheels will go back on. Then I'll pump it up, equalize it, pump it, equalize it, pump it up, find that pressure that I like, my standard setting. So the whole reason I did this in the first place is because setting the bike up to my exact settings, so my pressure, my compression settings and whatever, it didn't feel right. And regardless of how I chased it with the compression dials, because sometimes that's a factor, the compression oil is fresh, so it's uh, maybe a little bit more dense or whatever, uh, feels a little bit better so you can run a little bit less compression or whatever. But it just felt like I didn't have the support, so I knew there was something going on with that spring. It wasn't bad, there wasn't a lot of grease in there, but there was enough for me to be, uh, to for that to be an indicator of why it wasn't wasn't feeling exactly how what how I like it. So the support wasn't quite there out of the spring. It was a little too springy, and I was I was really diving through the travel. I was usually generally I get to on even the biggest hits, the fastest runs, I get to about there on my travel, and with my same settings, but this fork re service, I was getting almost full travel regularly and. I don't really like that. I don't like the idea of using full travel unless you have an absolute oh shit moment. So, you know, down there, saving 20, 20 mil of travel, travel is kind of where I like it. So, yeah, should feel good. Let's put it all back together. And yeah, if you've got any questions or you've got any tips for me that I've kind of missed or whatever, holler, let me know. But that's how I go about it.